team leader. I don't want you to use this, this term as a commander because it kind of confuses people. You'll be a team leader. But I want to watch this. This is a guy, he's coming on a commercial fire. And the person, he's driving to get there. And the first person there could be one of you. And he's telling them on the radio what he sees and what he needs. That simple. What he sees, what he needs right now. And that's what you're going to do if you are in your neighborhood. And then, when this guy gets on scene, he's going to take command. That guy's going to give it to him. He's going to take it. And he's going to say what he sees and what he needs. And he's going to start directing people to do different things. So I want you to watch this for uh, a few moments so we can see what happens. And, and it kind of sets the tone of what I'm going to talk to you guys about. And I don't know if you'll be able to hear this. Right? I'm going to take command, 
I'm going to give you fire attack. You guys are going to do that. You're going to say, hey, I'm going to give you guys suppression, right? They're going to go through the neighborhood thing, right? So you're going to use similar terms, maybe. Sounds a little confusing, okay? But it's very similar. Okay, so he tells that guy, but what's he doing? You see where he is? This is where you guys have to think about whoever takes command initially. Where do you want to be your command post? In your neighborhood, you think about that. Can I? Is there a corner of my street where I can see a large part of the street that I'm trying to take care of? So that's what we want. That's why he moved. You see what's happening? Things are changing, and he's trying. To, he's the one who has the overall look of that, and he has to let them know because if those guys aren't inside yet, if they were inside, he might need to get them out because a fire in a large structure can be very dangerous. Because a, a, a smoke in a that's filled in a large structure means it's a big fire and it's already filled that structure. So for it to come out like that, things are happening very rapidly, and I'll show you in a minute, things are happening. But the point I want you to really bring up is this. He starts telling the crews what to do. That's all you're going to do. Someone's fire attack, you hear the next word he used, vent. He's telling the truck to do ventilation. So a truck company has the big ladders. They're eventually going to go up to do the thing. So he took care of someone's going to go inside and spray water. Someone's going to go on the roof and open it up to allow some of the hot smoke and gases to come out. So he's given some jobs. He also talked about softening the structure. So all that means, just to explain real quick, is someone's going to go around and make sure that every entrance can be able to get in. So no one, maybe who gets trapped inside or something like that, can get is stuck inside. That if someone's in one area of the building, they can get in that room right away, get in that building. Um, in any city. So he's going around, softening it. Uh, it used to mean to break all the windows, but we don't do that anymore <coughs> because it's allowing a flow path of air, and that would actually get the fire going. So we don't want to do that. But he's looking around, making sure no doors. This, as you saw in some of the credit, this is a vacant building. So the risk is very low as far as what we, what we talk about, and what I want you guys to think of as you're going to houses. If you know Mrs. Jones is in Idaho, I don't really want to pay attention to that house. I know my neighbor, she's in Idaho. Do I have to really go to that house? No, because it's low risk, so I want to take, it's a low life saving, so I want to take low risk. There's no life there, I don't want to go in there right now. But Mr. Smith over here, he's here and he's an invalid, I want to go in that house. I'm willing to risk a lot to save a lot. Mrs. Jones is in Idaho, I risk nothing to save nothing. So you have to have that mentality, right, that you go to your house. That's why it's great to get to know your neighbors and stuff. So this is what he's doing. So he's doing this, and later he's going to pull everybody out because there's nothing inside worth saving, worth risking their life for. It's a vacant building. So now they can pull out, they can open up the roof, and go with all defensive and spray hose lines. So let me show you real quick what happens. It starts to get really ugly. Wow. Right? And you see that ladder to the left. Is about to spray water. Is that about five yeah. minutes you forward that? Yeah. You see all the firefighters outside now? No one's going inside. See he's see that water on the left? That's called uh, a master stream. It's called defensive. If you see, ever see that, it means no one's usually inside. Or not in that area where he's spraying. Because that'd be very dangerous. Because there, there, there's gonna be roof, there's gonna be collapse because we're gonna put so much volume of water. Because all we want to make sure that it happens now is that fire doesn't spread to any other buildings near it. And right now, it looks pretty good. It's really good. See, how, see how the flame? Wow. See, it's just building and building and building. Hey, subcrew, pull on water. Let's try to focus that water over here on the delta. You see, it's over there. You see this one's taking that? He's ready to go. They can also do hand lines where they have what they call a deck gun on the ground. They can also spray water. The same amount that the, that the ladder pipe. Okay? Right, so you got to be careful of that. So I just wanted to show you that. Um, we don't have to get into the whole thing. There's fighting fire. Uh, it's kind of boring. Were there any hazmat buildings? <laughs> <laughs> uh, Marty just brought up a question. Is there any hazmats? Again, that should be you. You guys should have that. This black smoke is usually um, the wood products and stuff like that. If you start seeing smoke that's different colors than gray and black, you should really be concerned. If this was an old Costco or a Costco that was current, and you start seeing a um, uh, lot of black smoke, really thick, thick, dense, could be a lot of plastic products. What are the, what's the plastic made of? Exactly. 
So a lot of stuff in there and you don't want to get near that. So if you know Mr. Jones has a shed in the back, like the crews that went to the Thomas fire, and the captain walked back to the back of the house, the house was okay, but the rear had a shed, it was fully involved. He told us, let's go, and as he started walking, what's wrong? His legs, lost all feeling in his legs. As he looked at the shed, green smoke was coming out. What do you think was inside that shed? Pesticides. Pesticides, organophosphate pesticides, a lot of things. He told his crew, back out, back out. They all lost feeling as they started backing out. 15 minutes later, they were okay. So it was short-lived. So, so they were inhaling those fumes. So that would be you guys. You want to think of that, right? So remember, risk a lot to save a lot. If you know your best friend, Mrs. Jones, in there, I'm going to risk that. I'm going to try to get her out. But if I know Mr. Smith is in Idaho, I'm not going to go in there. I'm going to make sure the fire department comes, hey, we let this burn right now. We're not going to do that. And that's, you guys have to make those decisions, right? We're not going to be there for a while. See how overwhelmed we are right now? Well, just a call like that, obviously, we'd release those units right now on this call if we had a like, structure fire going. So I'm trying to give you that mentality as you start to understand the ICS system, incident command system. It's just a structure to use to help you make some decisions, put people in charge, delegate out the jobs so you can get the job done in a quick manner. Just like a lot of you already do at work, if you are in any sort of management or supervisor position, you kind of do that, but this structure gives you some of that so you can do it quickly in an emergency. So if you understand it, it's easy to kind of put it together, okay? So, can you turn the lights on, Joel? Yeah. We're going to, um... So I want you guys, uh, does everyone have a handout? If you don't, please park up. So I have some handouts that I give you guys. I want you guys to look at the, uh, the thin one first, and that's just two pages. No. Uh, you want to go over a couple terms and reminders. Now, without anyone who's on the board, don't answer this question. We already know that you probably know this. Okay? Who remembers in their original CERT training? Uh, who took CERT training in the very last class? Anyone? What was your first name? Phil. Phil. Uh, who took CERT training within the last year? Last two years? Two yeah. years, last three years? Five years? Great, great to see you guys here. Uh, just coming back, awesome. So this is why it's great to do this kind of reminder. Okay, so the incident command system. Does anyone remember, not the circuit board, what that system is from their, their class? Okay, see so that's why we, we do this. Okay, so remember, it's just a set of a structure that we're gonna follow to put someone in charge. Now, look at the first page I gave you, okay? Incident command, okay? Again, it's just the term that we use for the structure, the system, okay? Why well, do I have a slash there? You should obviously slash TL, team leader. So here's how it's gonna end. I'm gonna show you a video of how I want it to make. So here's my house. I come outside. Hey, honey, you okay? The kid's okay? Yeah. I'm gonna do a quick look around the house. Look around the house. Things okay? You see this video? Yeah, things are okay. Hey, honey, stay here. I got my go bag. Got my, I, I'm a seat carrier, so I'm a radio person too. I'll be back. Hang here. Check your cell phone. Call your distant site away from here. The earthquake just happened. Okay? Make sure the good boy stay inside. I go out. So now I'm walking my neighborhood, and I'm going to show you some forms. And now I'm looking as I'm going to the stage here that maybe we've talked about. Right? Me and Barbara live in the same neighborhood. Me and Barbara say, hey, this is this stage area. So I'm gonna meet Barbara there because I know she's coming too. And I'm looking and I'm seeing, looking for houses. God, that one's damaged, that one's damaged, making some mental notes. And now I get to the staging area. I'm the first one here. I'm in charge. I'm the first one here. But I know Barbara knows more than me. So Barbara comes up. Here, Barbara. Uh. <laughs> Barbara, what'd you see? What'd you see? Anything? Yeah, I saw the blah, 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 blah. Good. Hey, uh, Jones' house didn't look too good. Mm -hmm. uh, Mr. Smith, you know, he's stuck in there, so we're going to get him. Um, hey, I don't feel comfortable. Do you want to be in charge? Sure. Okay. So now Barbara's the team leader. Okay? Now Marty comes. Come on, Marty. 
Okay, Ian? Okay, so we all come up. Barbara's in charge. Okay, Barbara, what do you guys see? We all kind of gave our pass down. What'd you see? What'd you see? Wow, that looks good. Someone's making some notes. Ian, we, hey, hey. Barbara says, Ian, can you be my scribe for a minute? She makes some, some notes that we all talked about. Okay, now Barbara's going to tell us what he wants to do. It's all going to be Barbara now. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Just, I don't want to put on the spot. Okay. Rob, you're Rob. Okay. Rob, I want you to go on the north side of the street and look to see if there's any fires going on right now. Come back and let me know. And I want you to take Ian with you because you want him to be in Paris if you can. Okay. Marty, you and I are going to go on the south side of the street and we're going to meet back here in about five to ten minutes as soon as we can. Okay, and we're going to look for fires on the south side of the street. You're on the north side of the street. Look for fires and make any mental notes. Try to do quick knock on doors. See if people are okay. So you have ten houses to go to. We have ten houses. We'll come back. So I, as Barbara, just told them what to do and us what we're going to do, and we're going to come back. I just made a quick plan. That's all you're doing. So we got to come back and see what do we need. We're the only ones who showed up. It's an hour now after everything happened. We're the only ones who showed up. So I took over, Barbara came, I gave it to her, she's the team leader. She told us what to do, and now we're going to go forward. So we go out, then now we come back. Now, I say, okay, what'd you find out? I say, hey, we have two fires going on, they seem small, okay, we probably need some fire service. Now we have a couple more people come up. So Carol comes up. Carol, come here. So Carol comes up. Okay, Brenda. Ready comes up. Okay, now we have some more people. Are, you, are your families okay? No. They're not? <laughs> go back to call. Go back. That's a good response. She shouldn't be here. Her family's not okay. She shouldn't be here. What is the first thing you have to do? Safety. Safety. You have to take care of your family. You can't help us if you're worried about your family. So Barbara go, uh, Carol goes home. She comes back. Are your family okay? Fine now. Now they're okay. <laughs> so I'm the team leader. I go, okay. Here's what we have. We have two houses on the north side that are burning. We have three houses that we need to evacuate. There's, it's, uh, it's Easter break, four, four houses that are not home. The south side, we came up with, there's two gas lines that are ruptured, <clears throat> flowing fire because it caught fire. We're gonna leave those for right now, okay? But we didn't get to the south side as far as people might be inside. And we know that those people on the south side always stay home for Easter, so we know that we have to check five houses there. Okay, so, Team leader, he's making the decisions. He or she's making the decisions. Okay, Carol and Brenda, you're med ops. I want you to set up, and I'm going to tell them what I want them to do and where I want them to go. Okay, remember the staging area? That seems a good place for med ops. I want you to set up staging at med ops. I know at Mr. Smith's house, he has some backboards. So, Carol, can you make sure you get that set up? And if you need more people to help you, let me know. And as they come in, I'll set up the med ops. You have your radio, right? Yes. Okay, we're going to be on a side tack channel. <laughs> so it's met ups. Okay, Ian and Rob. Okay, here's what I want you to do. Here's our fire extinguishers from uh, Doug Anderson's house. You're gonna take those. And see if you can put out those fires. If you can't, let us know and come back. And again, reaffirm those houses been checked. Put an X mark so you know. And anyone who's walking and and is okay, get them to come to met ops just to hang out. If you feel that one of certain members, send it to me. Is that clear? So I told them what I want. I told them are you clear? They understand. Okay. Marty. Marty right now, <laughs> Marty right now was on crutches, but he came over anyway. He can't do this much. Marty, you're my scribe. Okay? All right. So he's gonna write down everything I tell and everything I do. So we have kind of a record of it. And the fire department comes, he can show them, say, hey, here's what we've done so far. We have these two houses, they come back. So they're going to come back and report me. I'm going to check my med ops later. So we have fire strikes going on, we have med ops going on. Okay? Good job. Okay, you guys sit down for me. Okay. Okay, what do you think? Good job. Let's give him a hand. Okay, do you see? What did, now, let's fade back. We're going to fade back in the big picture. We're way back. And high above the city of Cope City. So we were in, let's say we were in Raintree. That's where we were. Raintree is where that is. Okay, team leader Barb's and our team, they're walking around doing that. Now we're fading back. The fire department is doing earthquake uh, 
routes, they're trying to see what's down. We know Overland is down. It's collapsed in the, the creek. Can't get across there. So we have to rely on Engine 3, Truck 3 that's in District 3. They would have to come down to Raintree to help them. We can't get across that way. We might have to go off to La Cienega National, go that way maybe. So we're looking at it. So we're driving around, and as we're driving, the battalion chief, me, I'm going into a room in the fire station number one, and I'm going into the, what we call the DOC, okay? The department's operating center. And I'm going in there because dispatch might be down, and now I'm calling them just on radio and saying, engine 41, rescue 41, you got any updates? And I'm gonna say, I'm gonna be uh, fire one command. I can name myself anything I want. So, I'm starting to do that. See how they're driving around? They're driving around trying to find things, okay? So then, Bill comes in, because he's a radio operator, or uh, Joel, and they show up at station one. I go, hey, man, the sea cares. They know that they're gonna do that. Or Steve, he's gonna go in there. I go, Steve, let me know. I'm, I'm Steve, he's in, in C Care, so I'm saying, hey, let me know if you get any calls from CERT. Because there are eyes on the ground right now. Our guys are driving around, and our guys might come on accident after accident after accident, or disaster after disaster, little disasters, right? So I am technically the incident commander of our city right now, and you guys are under me. So let's go back at our chart. Here's how, here's how it works. So remember with the big picture? I'm up here, okay? You guys are down here in the operations, you're doing it. So you're the team leader down here. Now, this is why I, some people get confused with this. So I'm up here on the big picture. Down in, your, in Rain Tree, you have your own little incident going. But eventually, you answer up to us, right? So you're trying to get that information to us so we can get you help. So it just gets miniaturized in that, okay? So let's look at some of these so you guys can understand the terminology. Operations, that's what you guys are doing in the neighborhoods. You are doing things. What is operations? Med ops, fire suppression, assessing, doing size ups of buildings, um, doing any sort of medical care of anybody. Okay, let's go to the next one logistics. What does it say there? Supplies. So if someone gets there, say you have a lot of people, but they go, hey, I can't really carry anything, but I'm the guy who you said could have all the equipment at my house, I'm going to take care of that. So you say, okay. Uh, Steve Harvey, you go to your house, you're logistics. If we need anything, you're going to get that for us. So he's logistics. Okay? Simple. All you guys have to do is call him supplies. He's our supply person. Okay? Go to planning. Okay, who do you think was planning in this next to me? So you guys can figure out what's under, what does it say under planning? Subscribe. Who's who our planning person? Marty! Exactly. He's this writer. So later, <coughs> Marty is such a highly intelligent person. <laughs> And he, he's been with me the whole time. He's going to tell Barb, hey, Barb, it's, it's 18 hours now. Fast forward 18 hours. All the teams are getting tired. And Marty goes, hey, Barb, we've got to think of the next operate, what we call an operational period. You guys, when you're in your neighborhood, you can't last forever, right? Fire you can't last forever. So that's what we call operational periods. You have to have rest time. And Marty says, hey, I'll start to write the plan for the next period so we know what to do. We just did some things, we wrote it down, and Marty's going to look at that, and he's going to help draw up a plan. All it is is, okay, what's the next time? Is, look, our people are tired, so we need some more resources, so I'm going to talk to logistics, maybe. Um, what are we going to do when we get there? Well, Ian came back with his team, with uh, Rob, and they found out that those fires are out of control, and they're going from fire to fire, so we need the fire department to come in, so we're going to make sure that we got a hold of Steve and Sierra and say, hey, we need fire suppression right away because these fires are spreading from house to house and we could lose the whole neighborhood. So we need fire suppression that's out of our control. So he's writing this down. So what, and so he's making objectives. So I don't want to get into all that stuff, but what's simple is you guys are going to find out what's important. And it's kind of like we do every day when you come home and go, do I need to get groceries? Ah, it's good on yesterday. So my groceries are good. Do I need to take Johnny or Susie to the, to the school today? See, those things, you just have to apply, how do I do some of those things? And that's kind of what you're doing for the next thing. And that's what we write those plans. And that's what we do. And I, I didn't bring a packet, but the, uh, at the Thomas <coughs> Fire, every day they came out with a new packet that was <coughs> like 30 pages long. It had maps on it, stuff like that. And when I was there as one of the strike team leaders, I was actually a trainee there, I would go to our page. I was in Division um, WW. 
which was in Mon we were in Montecito. So if you guys saw some of the pictures of Montecito, we had mudslides later. Yeah. We were in some of those houses that the mudslides took out. But who knew that the rains were going to come, right? So we were there. I would go in. I'd, okay, I'd say, what's the priorities in Montecito? And what, you know what it was at that time? The priority was this. This kind of gives you that thing. The NX operator pivot. They'd say, hey, the fire was off on the ridge here to the, um, it was to the southeast. And they say, if it gets over the ridge, what we need to do is build a dozer line above these houses. So if the fire gets down, it won't cross that line. The winds are not, and they would give us the weather report, what it is. And so they go, well, we're a little concerned that it might cross the line. So they say, hey, we want you guys to put in a hose line for 20,000 feet in different areas to protect the line when it comes, if the fire crosses over. So we know our objectives, we know what strategy we're going to use, the tactics, we're going to put in the hose line, and we're going to sit there all night if the fire comes over. In the meantime, they gave objectives to the air ops. And the air ops, as you guys might have seen in the news, were constantly dropping, right? So they were supporting our operations too, but on the ground units, so we were sitting in type, just to give you a quick type, uh, uh, Type 1 fire engines, which are our city ones, what do we do? We usually protect houses. So we go up to the neighborhoods, we take hoses out if we think that we can protect these houses, and deploy the lines around, the fire comes, we spray, make sure it's okay, we wet down the house, things that we can do, uh, get stuff, wood away from there, people have wood piles, we protect the house, we call softening the structure, like I talked about. We do all those things, get it ready, and we try to meet our objectives. And we're there for so many hours. And they say, hey, at 7 the next morning, you guys are off duty and it's your rest period. So we have a so obviously, in a disaster, um, Barb, as a team leader, is going to have to make a decision. Okay, you guys, we don't know how long we're going to be here. So she's going to start creating rest periods. Okay, I want you guys to do work for 12 hours, and then the other team will come in at night. You guys rest. Get rest. Well, Brenda might say, hey, Barb, I'm fine. I'm fine. I can do it. And she just keeps working. Because she's such a hard worker. And you know, Brenda, I need you for the next morning. You know? You're my med ops person. You've got to be, you're going to be doing that. You're going to be second through. Now, hopefully, as you can imagine, disaster could get on. Look at the Thomas fire. See how long that went on? Look at the things. So an earthquake, as we know, could go on long. But you guys are already a step ahead because you're preparing. OK, so any questions so far? Is this, is this starting to come clear? Yeah, I'm really wondering about how we manage the operational period. Because we're at a convergence of volunteers right. all at once. Well, in a period, maybe over a couple of hours. And what we're going to have to do, it seems to me, is perhaps send half of them home and say, I need you to come in 10 hours. So what would you recommend? How great question. That? That's a great question. So what you can do is keep them there initially and see what you have. So it's not going to hurt anybody to go, OK, look, let's fan out the neighborhood. Here's how much we have. That's a lot of meetings. How many volunteers we have? Hopefully, they'll all come. What's the first thing you want to ask them? Take care of your family. If you didn't go back, now how many we have? <clears throat> so use them initially to get initial assessment. What do you have? And then me and Marty, he's my plan guy, he's gonna help me. Okay, let's make a plan here. Initially, we want to take care of immediate need. What would be the immediate need after an earthquake in a neighborhood? What do you think would be the most? What's the priority in, in most disasters? What's the priority? <coughs> evacuate. Evacuate. We call it, or we would call it life safety. Life safety. So that's what I think of. I need to, do I need to evacuate them? Do I need to get, and where do I need to get them? These things I'm saying. Do you think most houses are a safe place to be in after an earthquake? No. Well, depends. So what do I think of? If you go to the houses and it didn't fall down the initial one, it seems okay. They could be. You, if, if it's summer, maybe we can get them outside and go, okay, we're going to set up an area to evac and maybe we have some temporary housing. Maybe we've got camping tents, we put them in there, but maybe we'll have to use some housing. Like in Raintree, they have uh, a couple um, club clubhouses. So that could be a place where we hey, let's come right here. This place stay. Well, the aftershocks usually are less. So we can maybe take, maybe think about, hey, we could keep them here initially. So you want to make some of those decisions. So keep, keep the volunteers there. OK, we fanned out. You know what? We don't have as much job. So I want half of you go home, get some rest. Can you come back at 7 or whatever, 12 hours later? So you get there at 10 in the morning, come back at 10 tonight. That by initially, okay? So, um, and you know where they are, you have their names, and so yeah, I would send half of them, see what you need, and send half of them. Say, hey, we need to rest for you know? So that's a, that's a good question, and that's what you want to do. 
And that's what the fire department does. That's why, if you guys saw some of the video footage of the Thomas fire, I like to refer back to this kind of real life. The Ventura County Fairgrounds was our staging area. But the fire got so big, they actually created in uh, what campground we were at. Uh, there's a campground. Oh, Kajuma Campground later was the oh, north uh, staging area. So initially I went to the south staging area where at there. So people were in there during the rest time, or they were in the other one during the rest time. So they went, stayed, rested, and then were ready to go. They go into their, uh, in the morning, they had a briefing. So, what's your name? What's your name? Um, Kathy. Kathy. So, you know, Kathy brought up that point. So you send them home, you say, come back at 7 tonight, let's say it started at 7 in the morning, and you say, come to the staging area. So when you meet at the staging area, you're going to do a briefing. So hopefully me and Marty, got together with our planning, okay, look, here's what we've accomplished so far, here's what we need to do. Look, we haven't even gotten to the flax district, we haven't even gotten to uh, 8,000 building of rain trade. We've got to get there, we just haven't been able to do well. So we said, okay, 8,000 is our next priority, so we're going to go. And Kathy comes in with her team, Kathy, here's what I need you to do. You're the team leader, and you're going to do uh, assessment of the 8,000 building. She takes her team, and she goes over there, okay? So that's how it is. So let's look at the next page. Turn on to that page. Okay? This is how it would look if you if you have a lot of volunteers. We have. You have the groups that you guys learn to be, which is the priorities. Remember, life safety is a priority, okay? But the groups aren't in any priority. They're not in uh, one, two, three. But look at it. Okay, so our team leader is still far, right? Now she put in, because it's gotten so big, she put in as far as compression. So Ian has got his people, and he's going to put out teams because he knows there's fires in Rain Tree in several different areas. So he's going to create the teams for that because Barb realizes now there's too many things. You see how I'm expanding my thing? Because if Barbara has to, say you, all of you show up at the state here, Barbara can't give all of you jobs so she's going to go, Steve, I need you. Ian, I need you. Bill, I need you. Uh, Eric, I need you. Come up here. You're going to be my team leaders. Bill, your suppression. <clears throat> Ian, you're going to be search and rescue. Steve, you're going to be comms. Okay? Uh, Eric, you're going to be med ops. You're going to be medical group. Get your people. Then out of the rest of you, what do we have? Like 25 people here? So I created the three groups. So they're going to divide up the groups. Okay? And then I'm going to show you the forms. You can kind of keep track of that if, if you had to. So now, now who is Barbara talking to? She's not talking to all of you. She's talking to those three people. Okay, here's what I need you to do. Okay, Bill, you're charging fire suppression. Go, let me know what your needs are. Uh, assess the neighborhood. Here's the, our initial briefing that we got. We know that the 1,000 building is fully involved. Stay away from there. The 2,000 building is rain tree. Nothing's going on. Can you check inside? Get, get an assessment for me. See if there's any fire. If you can, try to put it out with your fire suits. If it's too big, try to radio back. And, and if we need the fire department to come. So that's what he's talking about, right? So Steve's comms. I'm going to say, Steve. Can you make sure these teams have a radio? Do you have any extra? Can you get them from one person and give them to the, at least the team leader so that they have some communication because they're going to be in there? Okay? So Barb's the initial team leader, but she's making smaller teams. Okay? So um, as you talk, so delegate out that out, Barbara only has to talk about those things and, and she's getting feedback. Hey, this is the medical group. Okay? So look at her medical group. Okay? So, um, who can say was medical group leader? Okay, Eric. So Eric's medical group leader. But now Eric has, say he has 10 of you. Can he talk to 10 of you and be efficient? No, so he's gonna divide you up. So he goes to the 8,000 building. He goes, hey, you guys, this is our building. So he says, um, Kathy, I want you to take three people and you're gonna take the third floor. Let me know what needs. Knock on the doors if there's anyone you need. Okay? He said, Steve, Steve, I want you to take two people and go to the second floor. Do the same thing. Okay? Then he's going to take, uh, what's your first name? No, in the back. Behind. Doug. Me? Yeah. Valerie. Valerie. Valerie, take the only person left, Valerie, and one person. Always try to be in teams. Valerie, take the first floor. You guys report back to me. What's Eric doing now? He just delegated. Now he's waiting. Okay? It's important to have that person if you can. Now, take away all those ten people. It's just Eric and Steve and Valerie. That was a 
He just says, okay, Eric Steve, hey Steve, take the second floor, I'll take the first floor, Val, you take the third floor. Do the best you can. You see how I'm big? I'm small. Well, you have no one else. So what would I do? I'm, I'm Eric. Hey, what in here? Oh, hi, what's your name? Bill? Bill, are you okay? I'm okay. Is anyone with me? No. I was just scared of this. Bill, I need your help. Can you help me right now? Yes. I need you to go door to door. Help me. You have to do that. You're going to have to get people. So See you what I mean? <clears throat> yeah. But if you don't have them, do you not do anything? So just realize you have to adapt. And that's the whole reason. That's what this uh, it, it's in a command system is for. Do you not want to leave one person with the IC though? No, so Barbara is still back over at the staging area. She sent the medical team of three people over there. Or she sent the, the medical team that has 13 people over there and gave them a thing, right? So the, so the, so the Once you're, there's doing this, like, this, you know, they're checking on people, and how about if there's really need to be medical, um, need to be given to people, do the, like, resources are just from what we find, or right. how does that, um, Great question. So let's go, do we bring them to this? Great question. To, so let's get down to the nitty-gritty, like, say, remember life safety number one, right? Mm -hmm. So let's take medical, because that's the most important, although mm -hmm. fire, if a fire's impinging, and you can do something right away and make, put it out, but you know, you're trying to find out people. So let's go. Let's say, for example, we are at Rain Tree, okay? And delegates everybody, he's in charge, he gets there first, he delegates out, and he goes, what's the first street to the left of Rain Tree? What's that first Rain Tree circle? It goes around the Yeah, but what's the next little port? Don't know right Okay, let's look at the look my map. What's one of the names? Huck Finn Drive. Huck Finn Drive. So his sister, as you go up to Ian, and he says, hey, take Huck Finn Drive, and you guys have your group, and say you have five people, and there's five houses. Go to those houses. So sister knocks the door, and um, older Mr. Jones opens the door, says my wife, she's collapsed, she's stuck under the refrigerator. It collapsed on top of her, I can't get her out. She says, okay. Is she breathing? Is she talking to you? Yes, she is. Okay. Anyone else hurt? No, no one else is hurt. She says, okay. So she has to come back, and then the other sister comes out, and the other people on the team, they come out, and what do you got? I got no one in this house. On Huffman Drive, let's call them houses one, two, let's call them houses one through five. House one is empty. House two is empty. House three has three people in there that are okay. House four has a lady trapped. We need to get her help. Okay, we're going to go back to house four and go help her. And you tell Mr. Jones, I'll be right back. Because you remember, in a disaster, you want to do the most amount of good for the most amount of people. If you get caught up on just one person who maybe is okay, then you're forgetting this other person that all you had to do is tilt their head back and open their airway and they were breathing again. You might have missed something. So to do the most amount of good, you have to assess real quick and now in your brain and talking to your fellow team members, look, here's what we have. Okay? Now, do you go to house one if you know Ian knows house one? Hey, they're in Idaho. No, you don't go to house one. So I just saved some time. I go to house two. Knock the door, come out, anyone in there? No one answers, okay. I don't put an X, because I haven't confirmed, no one in there. But I'm not gonna break that door down now yet, because I'm gonna wait a little. Go to house three, we found out, there's three people in there, okay. See if they can join your team. Exactly. And you put an X, or whatever. What do you guys designate, uh, Joel, as an okay? X. 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 So now, Carol goes in there, I, I thought we had to do this house. Oh, X, oh, we've already been here. She knows, it's good, right? She goes in there. So, the lady's trapped. Her husband's okay, she's trapped. You don't know all her injuries, you just know she's trapped, right? So we're gonna get her help, but I need to go back to my team and tell them. So Carol and Ian are part of my team. We're, hey, there's a lady trapped. I need your help, let's go back in there. So we go back in there, we lift the refrigerator, we use our prying methods, how do we get, we get the refrigerator off her. She was really just stuck, she actually can stand up, and we get her outside. Just to clear the problem, right? So now house five, okay? has someone that's unconscious and unresponsive. Do we leave them there? No, now that's a priority. So we, someone just came back and told us that, so we get in there and hey, we gotta get her out, we gotta get them to med ops. So that's the first thing we gotta get in med ops, because remember, Carol and Brenda are in our med ops, or whoever's in our med ops, and we gotta get them there, okay? But the first thing you gotta do is, remember med ops may be way over here. So we have a term we call casualty collection points. So if you go neighborhood by neighborhood, you might go, Okay, if there's anyone seriously hurt, then we have to get the med ops, which is like a 
tenth of a mile over there. Let's, here's where we're going to collect people who we need to get there. So say you have 10 people, and you have Barb, who's a, a nurse. You say, hey, Barb, can you say at the casual collection point? And they start bringing them. So we bring that lady who's unconscious and unresponsive, we bring her there. Barb starts to do a rule of quick assessment. What do I have? Uh, it's an immediate. Okay, so as soon as we get more people, we gotta get her to bed ops. So right now you just wanna get her out of danger. So she's in a house by herself, so we wanna get her out where someone knows her. So see how this is coming together? It's using common sense, what do I wanna do? So you gotta go house by house, it's gonna take some time. That's why the more you guys can do, the more you have to. If you can't wait for, a, if you don't have a team, you might have to do it by yourself. Now obviously that's, the more you know your neighborhood, the more you feel comfortable with it. But, as you might see, and I don't think you're gonna see that, uh, we'll see it in one of the slides. I'm going to show you the slide of the CERT ICS class a little bit. Just remember, as you walk into the house, if you want to do a visual assessment, does this house look like it should go in there? Well, if you see, wow, that foundation, it's moved off the foundation. I don't think I want to go in there. Uh, I don't think anyone's in there, but I'll, at least I can pound on the door. Anyone in there? Help! Oh, shoot, someone's in there. <laughs> what do I do? Well, I know Ian is an engineer. So Ian, uh, what, do you, what do you think? He goes, uh, it's, it's moved, but hey, let's, I think we should take the risk. Okay? And so it, at least it's moved. You don't know when an app is going to hit, but you're going to take that chance. Hey, let's, we've got to get someone in and get out. We're not going to stay in there, right? It's not going to be a house we might maybe use, right? It's off the foundation or slightly off the foundation. So, stable. so does that answer your question? So initially, you do an assessment, find out what you have, come back to your team, and go, okay, what do we need to get that person out? We have one person stuck and one person unconscious. We're going back to that house, get that person out, go to this house and get them outside. So that's what you do over and over again until you fill your passion collection points. That neighborhood's done. Now you're going to go, um, you're going to radio back to Mike Landau. He's our logistics guy. Mike, we need litter bearers. He's going to tell the team leader, he's Barb. Barb, they're going to need litter bearers because capture collection point at Huck Finn Drive has three patients. And two of them are immediate, and we got to get them to the med ops area so they can take care of them. And eventually, what's going to happen is the team leader, Barb, is going to tell Steve, hey, Steve, can you radio back to see cares? We have, right now, now we have med ops is overwhelmed with five, ten, ten people who are immediates. If the fire department can get here, see if they can get here, we need to try to get to the hospital. What? What's that you say? <laughs> SoCal Hospital is damaged and destroyed? It's collapsed? Yes, because they didn't rebuild it. <laughs> Just letting you know. Hey, well, uh, so things can happen. So things can happen. Does that start to make sense? Okay. Next thing. Let's go over fire suppression real quick. Let's just talk about it. You're in fire suppression group. Do you put out every fire? No. Okay, what fire would you put out, not Ian? What fire would you put out? I'm going to give you a fire. This is my house. It's a true story. You, you come up on, what's your name? Kathy. Kathy. You come up on my house. Hey, I know Rob lives there. <coughs> and you see fire coming out of the second story. You see it coming out of the window. Do you go up there? No. Right. It's a clue. If it's coming out of the house, you can't do anything. Okay. Next time, you come on my house, you bang on the door, and the door comes open. The cat says, Rob, Rob, are you there? I go, yeah. And as you go in, you see by the stove, the cab is starting to catch on fire. But you have to be with logistics, and they give you a fire extinguisher, and you start doing your assessment because you're a fire suppression. And you go, oh, I can hit that. You hit it real quick. You say, okay, Ron, we'll be right back. I'm going to help you. What's wrong? I say, oh, my leg is broken. I was running out of the house, and I tripped. My stupid dog was right there. He <laughs> tripped and fell. Okay, so he's, are you okay? Yeah, I think I'm okay right now. I'm in a lot of pain, but I think I just broke my leg. So you just put out the fire, right? Because it was just a small flame, right? So that's what you want to see. You have to make those assessments, right? So you want to radio back, though, if there was any sort of wind event at the same time as the earthquake, and you see fires going, then you want to radio back, hey, we need to get to this house. So anyone has radio, you radio back to Steve because he's calm, and he gets it back to see and he goes, hey, we have two houses. Now, people ask about gas. Should we put the gas? So, so all of a sudden, there's a house that's off its foundation, and somehow a gas line broke, and it's, on, and it's just a flame coming off the gas line. Should we put that out? No, we shouldn't put that out. What should we try to do? Turn off the gas line. Turn off the gas. A 
okay, if you can safely get to it. A lot of times those things are pointed right to where the gas meter is, and you might not be able to get to it. But if you can, drop the gas. So that's what's in your go bag? Wrench. Gas wrench. So practice those things at good points. That's why, what's one of the things that you should do, and if Joel goes over this, when you come out of your own house, family's safe, you leave your house, what do you want to do? Check your own gas meter. Check your own gas, turn it off. Right? Whether it's damaged or not, it's just better to shut it off so that you don't have to worry about it. We actually don't teach that. Who? In the class. We say don't turn it off unless you think there's a problem because it will take weeks to come back on. Well, I would just suggest that um, if you if the, there's any damage to your house, any damage, initially, and it was that large of our we were doing this, shut it off now because any aftershocks could cause more damage. Okay. So that's all I'm saying. We do have cutoff valves too, though. We have automatic shut. Some right, do. some do, some not do. all. See, there's a lot of older uh, appliances and older gas lines. So just, just realize, you can make that assessment. Again, it's your house, make that, make that decision. That's going to be up to you. So just realize. But just practice doing it, you know, so you know, hey, how would I do it? Something like that. I'm trying to get a new gas meter for uh, a drill yard so when we do more uh, refresher drilling, we have a brand new one so you can see. Okay, so we get to our local neighborhood staging area. Right. Paris. staging area. Four circuit members show up and five neighbors show up. And what is it? Where what is our position sending neighbors out? Okay. So what I would do is send them to the, the least serious thing. So what do we need? We need a scribe. So you know your neighbor, you know her really well, but she never took cert. She's a darn good writer. <laughs> Make her scribe. That's one job, right? Because the more you can write down, the more you can reference it, what's going on. So you say, Hey Susie, remember I tried to get you to take cert? You don't want to do it? Sorry. Sorry, I can't give you one of those coveted jobs. But I got a great job to do. <laughs> okay, so you say, hey, I want you to follow everywhere I go. You need to do my scribe. So okay. And then if there's more, you say, hey, uh, Judy, you go with Marty. Uh, Joe, you go with Eric. And you, you give a scribe to each person. Because they don't want to have to deal with that, but it's an important part to kind of do. The other thing you can do is, um, first thing, what do you want to ask them? What's the first thing you want to ask them? Find their family. Showed up. Is their family okay? Is their family okay? Remember that? Safety first. Is their family okay? If any of them say no, they go back and let us know. What's the next thing you want to ask them? Do they have any skills? What's your skills? What if one of them says, I'm a neurosurgeon, I'm a doctor, I'm a nurse, I'm a paramedic? Say, I can okay. use you. I don't care if they didn't take a cert class at all. If they have any sort of medical, you really could use them. Okay, because you not, might not get any, and that could be a person. If it's a podiatrist, maybe not. It's dead after med school. I don't want to put my foot in my mouth. <laughs> okay, so does that sort of make sense? How is this going to unfold? So let's show them a couple things. Okay, so what I want to show you now. <coughs> running out of time here, but I want to show you the original CERT in action. Okay. Disaster is happening. This is the view of the show, and they're starting to do what we just talked about. So I want you to pay close attention to what they say to each other. They just one man just took care of his family. He told his wife and his two kids. He goes good. They have their own little go back. They're staying in the house. The phones don't work. And he's going out and he goes, hey, I'm going to go to the staging area to meet other certain people. And so they're all going to congregate. Pay close attention to what they say and what they do, because the team leader is going to take charge. And then someone else comes, and he tells that other person to go to this one area, exactly what we're talking about. So it's exactly what's going to happen that you should really practice. OK? And then we'll talk about that. Oh, hey, Mark. How are you? All right, good. How's everybody here, please? Uh, we're all right. Shaking up a little bit. It's a mess. Yeah. But we're OK. We were lucky. Are you OK? Yeah, we're all all right, but I noticed coming over, um, Peterson's at 1422 and the Parchman's at 1424. 
their place has got hit by a fallen tree. Oh, boy. Uh, Peterson's roof was damaged, and the parchment's deck is just totally crushed. Wow. Everybody okay? We out of there? Yeah. Rita's pretty shook up. Uh, but she's not hurt. Uh, I bet we'll find more. Let's yeah. go over to the yeah, let's place. Get that one. Oh, it's still there. Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> Here's the stage here. So Mary Lou saw a car crash. Right, a car and a pickup truck actually at 4th and Berkeley. Um, just bumps and bruises really. Everybody's okay and they're not blocking traffic. But when I left they were exchanging information, seemed pretty calm. Pretty good. And uh, what else, Bob? You saw the twisted roof of the gas station. Yeah, that was at Wallace the 13th. Uh, it seems to be all in control and traffic can't get around the roof. Okay. Anything else? Not for me. Okay. We've had that leaking propane grill that we saw. Right. And there were some down power lines. Right. And we ought to really go back and check the parchment's gas lines. It's really Here's good. the yeah. details. Okay, thank you. Hi, everybody. Hi, hey, hey, Beth. Hey, did you see the damage down at the community center? No. Uh, a tree fell on it. Uh, it looks like some limbs went through the roof and a big window. Uh, there are people there day and evening, so I wouldn't be surprised if there are injuries. I think the priority has to be the community center. Uh, Vivian, you can take Bob and Mary Lou down there. You'll be in charge. All right, I think you're right about the gas lines at 1424 Windsor, too. Uh, Barb, you and Wayne head over there on your way to the community center, all right? Wayne, you take the lead there. All right. Viv, can you have information back in 20 minutes? Absolutely. All right, terrific. Don't forget, write down everything you do and everything you see so we can get a good status report to the professionals when we get here. All right, okay. thanks, everybody. Wow, what a mess. All right, let's take a look at the exterior first. Mary Lou, Bob, I want you to go to the right. Wayne, Barbara, I want you to go to the left. I'll stay here, uh, let me know what you see, and stick with your buddies and meet back here in five minutes. Everything clear? Okay. Okay, excellent. It's up against the building, and there's a big broken window. We could hear people inside. They're calling for help, but I couldn't tell you how many. Okay. All right. Thanks. And what about y'all? Debris also, but uh, through a window back there, we saw a lot of smoke. Okay. It sounds like we're going to need to go in. I want you to stay in your parish, and I want you to use all caution. Uh, use a right-hand search pattern. I want you all to use a left-hand search pattern. 
I'll stand here and set up a triage area and just track what everybody's doing. Everybody okay with that plan? Okay. All right. Good luck. and I'm from this neighborhood's Community Emergency Response Team. We've been trained by the fire department to help out when, uh, you know, the professionals haven't arrived yet. Do either one of you have any medical experience? Sure, I work at an EMT in college. Okay, what about you? Putting band-aids on my three-year-old grandson, but that's about it, sorry. Okay, we can, we can use all the help we can get. Do you live nearby? Right over here. Okay, do you have any blankets you can spare? Sure do. All right, why don't you run home and grab them, and then just come on back here and you can help with the uh, minor injuries. Okay. All right, thanks. Okay, Becky, so we're going to go ahead and set up the triage area. We're going to put the minor injury sheet. Okay, so who can tell me what happened initially? Anyone? Hurricane. Well, not, not so much then. Hurricane, let's say it was very important. You're right, probably hurricane. A twist or something like that. So what happened? What did the guy do first? I told you, he say, saw his house, and he met that woman, and they went to the staging kind of where they're all supposed to meet. They, what did he do first when he got there? Exactly. Remember, common sense. Don't use a place if, if hey, does this same place seem safe? Is it not safe? It's safe, good place. I'm going to make this my command post. Then someone came up and they said, who's going to be in charge? Someone has to take charge. Someone has to make the decisions. Okay? So Ian says, I'm in charge. You all need to follow. Does that mean he's not going to um, get some advice? No. Because he knows uh, Joel's there and Steve's there and there's some sort of predicament. Like, I'm not sure. Hey, Joel, what do you think? Get advice, sure, but one person has to make some of the decisions to go forward. So then what happened? Another person came, and then she told, everyone told them what they saw. Remember when we talked about that? So what, did, what was his decision? What did they do? Divide the teams up. Who did he, where did they send someone? To what place first? Community center. The community center. Remember what's the priority? Congress. Life safety. What did she say? She knew her neighborhood. Hey, there's a nighttime meeting. Probably someone in there, and as I was coming up. So you see how you're making broad assessments from she was walking up, then they're gonna go there and make a better assessment, they're gonna go inside and make a better assessment. You're just constantly reassessing what you're doing. Okay, so then he says, okay, that should be a priority. Everywhere else we saw, everyone else those people saw said they're okay, they're okay, they're okay. So now he says, hey, go there. He gave her some resources that he could spare, right? Which was the majority of people. She goes there, what does she do? She delegates. She becomes the leader of that. He said, you're a leader. And he said, you go that way with a team of two. You go that way with a team of two. They didn't come inside yet. Again, common sense. It's a community center, so they have to, let's assess. They found out some important things. They heard noises with possible people trapped, like you said, or hurt. And then smoke. That's important. Now, no sound. She heard, let's say she heard no sound. But smoke, should we go inside? Maybe not. You got to decide that now. But sounds, people trapped, and with her information that we know, there are people who have a meeting there. Let's go inside. Let's take a chance. So now they're about to go inside. Some people came. Carol asked this question. Some people came who are not in CERT. What did he do with them? What did she do with them? Excuse me. Did they have any skills? What are your skills? What are your skills? Found some skills, and then she gave them a job to do. What better thing than resources? What do you got? Can you get some blankets? Hey, do you have any? Boards? Well, yeah, I'm a carpenter. You got any plywood? Uh, are they backboard size? Just about this high? Can you bring some over? I have some heavy blankets. Oh, I'm a um, a plumber. This that. You got any heavy tarps? I carry people out with heavy tarps. You can say, hey, could you have any this, this, this? Can you go get them? Hey, but I know my neighbor has this. Great. Can you go ahead? So that all they are now are resource people. So they're gonna go get resources. They're gonna go steal from their neighbors. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So great idea. Great idea. So it's kind of, you got to start thinking, what can you use those people for? If that lady said, hey, I'm a doctor, and say, hey, I'm going to need you to stay right here. We're going to bring some people out. And could you tell us how serious it is? No, is she supposed to be, I mean, she's all alone. Is she supposed to be saying, tracking who she's sent out? Is she supposed to be writing that? Yes, and I'm going to show you. Uh, it's getting late. You know, we're getting late. I'm going to go to the forums in a second. So, gonna, uh, so she would be tracking. So we'll stop here, and let's go to the second packet I gave you guys. OK? So the second packet, these are CERT forms. Um, LA City, CERT people use these. They're on their website. And, okay. Now look at the first one. 
damage assessment. See it says it right? So you provide to the team leader a damage assessment. You see what that guy had when he first came? He probably has it in his go bag, in his clipboard with the thing. Are you going to have that? No. Do you have to have this form? No. You can just make up your own thing. But this is just a, a guideline. Hey, what am I going to do? I just want to, hey, I'm going to my neighbor's name, Mr. Jones. You can make your own. Carol has some really good forms of her neighborhood that she, that she kind of has some things. You might just go, hey, I know Ray Tree building, and just write, make some marks. So when you get there and you're at the staging area, you can kind of tell them. You might not remember. It's going to be pretty frantic, right? People are going to be kind of in fear a little bit. We're going to be anxious. We're going to be excited because we want to help people. So all those emotions are going to be coming through. So try a document. Okay? And that's what this form. Next form. Look at the next one. What does it say at the top? Okay. Sign in, sir. So we get to the staging area. Marty's my guy. He comes in crutches. I go, Marty, I'm going to give you this form. Everyone who comes here, sign him in. So Brenda gets there. There's Brenda, CERT member, and she is a nurse. Okay, we're going to need Brenda. Barbara comes in, 1045, and she is a nurse. We need Barbara. Okay? Steve comes, and he knows how to cook all the food. We need him. Okay? We can give us some lines. Okay, she's going to sign. So, so Marty's going to sign everyone in. That's a good form. Yeah, does that mean the fire at barbecue? No. Okay? So that's all it is. And then you can use that later. Who do we have here? Like Kathy asked, she's like, wow, we have so many people here. So I'm going to take half the sheet. I said, hey, you. Everyone who came after noon, come on this side. Everyone on this side, okay, you guys, we don't need you right now. Can you go back, get some rest? We need you now. Okay, great. See if you can. We we'll talked about that. Okay. Next form. Okay. Assessment and tracking. Okay, so the first guy, I forget what his name was, Steve, he would be using this. So he's at the command post. He's the team leader of Rain Tree. And what he's going to do, he sent this lady right here, say her name was Mary, and he goes, I gave Mary the community center. So this thing is just to tell him what he's doing, what she's doing, and he's going to say, so say he had more people. He said Mary and her team, and he's going to name their team members. Mari's going to do that for, for Barb, she's the team leader. He's going to write that down. And now someone talked about the gas station. Let's say that was a danger, so people were trapped there. He's going to gas station. He's going to, you can name it wherever you want. Hey, I sent a team over there. So that's really just for tracking where you send people as the team leader, okay? And you're making individual teams, okay? Look over the next sheet, okay? Now, this lady right here, remember we said her name is Mary? I'm gonna say Mary, go to the community center, and I want you to assess the building, see if there's anyone hurt, see if there's any fire, and let me know, come back, let me know. She's, remember, what did he say to her when she first left? Can you get back to me in 20 minutes? So she's gonna get back to me, she probably has a radio here. Okay, she's gonna try to get back, they have radios, hopefully. Okay, so that's what this thing is for, is to tell them what they do. If you look on the next page, the next page is what this lady Mary has. She has this form, it could just be a blank piece of paper, it's what we call, and it's at the end of this packet, a 214 in the, in the fire service. Everyone in the fire service, they have 214. It's what you're doing every day, every minute of the day. So let me give you an example of the Thomas fire. I was there. At 0700, we had a briefing with the command post. We met with them. Hey, you're in Division MM. Your crew is entering to this Joel Falter, the supervisor. I'm writing that down. 0700. Joel Falter, the supervisor, told us to meet at the corner of Stevens and Creek Road in Division MM. 0745. Supervisor Joel gave me my assignment. We are to do structure protection off of Lafayette Drive. I'm writing this down. And now, at the end of the day, you're going to see hour by hour, half hour by half hour, two hour by two hour, it doesn't really matter what you did. So Mary here is going to write. She's, did you see her start to write? Hey, you two go to the left. You two go to the left, come back in five minutes. They came back. So hey, sent two teams to do the assessment of the community center thing. Now they came back. She said, now she might say at 10.45, I sent them inside. We hear voices, we know people might be hurt, we're going inside. She's writing that down. So all of a sudden she gets back and she wants to call um, that guy Mike, who's the team leader. Hey Mike, she can refer to her notes. So that's really what these forms are for, if you can. Does that mean you have to do it? What if you're the most intelligent guy like Marty? Maybe you have a photographic memory, you can remember it. You know? But what I'm saying is, in the heat of it, if you have something to write down, try to make some notes. It doesn't have to be on an official form. You can just make notes as you go. If you just had a, uh, a piece of paper like this and just said as you go, my name is Barbara. 
they made me the team leader, and I really didn't want it. <laughs> but, I took it but I took it anyway, so everyone called me commander. <laughs> Whatever you want to say, just hour by hour. Did I get that? So just, you're just writing it down. Okay? Next form. Look at the next one. Okay, this is MedOps. Okay? We have Eric and MedOps. He's going to have a form like this. Now, the cash flow collection report, remember we talked about Huck Finn Drive? There's two people, three people there. Now they get to meet Eric, and Eric's bringing them in, and he goes, oh, what do we have? Yeah, I gave you guys some examples. We have a 57-year-old man. He has multiple abrasions on his legs, but he has a possible broken arm. Delayed person, maybe a minor, probably a minor. At 1049, they brought in Doug Jones. Okay, he's an immediate 76 year old male. He's trapped in the building. He's unconscious, unresponsive, but he's breathing. He's an immediate. We need to try to get fired here to get him to a hospital if we can. So Eric's going to, so what's happening there is he's prioritizing these. So if you do get rescue ambulances there, he's going to go, hey, take Doug Jones. He's going to put numbers here. Take this guy first, this person second. So who do you think we want to have in med ops? What type of person? A medical person. Because they're going to have to make some of these critical decisions if you can get someone out of there and needs help. <clears throat> but just remember, we are very blessed in this area in a lot of ways. You have an immediate care, right? Could people last longer? They probably could in certain situations. So we might, we might, he might be there by himself. He might not be able to get into the rescue's there. The rescue could be going to call after call and keep transporting and say, okay, try to get to Rain Tree. They have a med ops person who says they have uh, four immediates. Say, so, okay, you know, that rescue gets there, he's gonna try to put everyone in the back of that rescue. Those rescues are meant for one person, two people at the most that you can lay down, he might try to get four. Because it's like, that's my only chance to get here right now, I might go to another place. Okay, I'm gonna try to get all four of them in there. You have to drop, stop, so we got Chief Rob? Yes, sir. To that point, if it's a real big thing and we've got our true rescue ambulances and 20 incidents or whatever, is it frowned upon? Is it possible that maybe somebody with a car and the roads are open that they can go ahead and take some of these people to some of these places if we know where to go? Great question. So that's why, MedOps is going to talk to the team leader. The team leader is going to talk to Steve, who's our comms. He's our communication person. And communication is going to talk to the sea carriers back at Station 1 where I'm at. Can you get me someone? I cannot get you someone for two hours, maybe. This And uh, uh, we have Barbara there. Barbara's a uh, nurse. <coughs> so this person's going to die. If we can get him to here, we might be able to save him. I would make that decision. You know what? We know a road's open. Uh, Again, through med comp, you know, get through comms. Hey, do you know when roads are open? We know it right now, but roads open. Okay. Uh, Bill has a uh, pickup. Let's get him in the back. They have to lay some pine on the back board. Let's get him in the back. Um, Barbara's going to make the decision that she has a, a EMT with her. The EMT's going to go back in the back of the truck and try to get, get her in there as fast as we can. You might make that decision. You know? Again, what you're trying to do here is get as much information so you can make a good decision. What if you find out roads are down, power poles are down on the roads, uh, Overland's out? You take them to Southern California Hospital when it did collapse. Yeah. yeah. The, the hospital's, the hospital's collapsed. Or just overwhelmed. Barbara's going to do the best she can with what she has. So she's going to tell the team leader, we need to get this person out of here. Yeah. Can, you, can you find out? So I you know, just realized. Um, what you guys just missed, we just did an EOC, uh, the Emergency Operations Center of Culver City, we just did a practice thing. We pretended last week on Thursday that there was an earthquake at 10.45 p.m. and we filled all the city personnel came in, including the, uh, the city manager came in, and they had their go bags, they came into the room that's in our <coughs> station one in the back. There's this room with multiple computers and stuff like that. We pretended that theirs, and they're playing their roles. And we had someone in another part of the station pretending to be calls coming in from all over the city. And, and we're trying to deal with it. We were getting overwhelmed. So I was at the command table with uh, the uh, uh, assistant fire chief. And him and I were the fire branch. The police chief was looking over, he had one of his captains there, and he was the law branch. We had the major public works guy, I don't know if some of you guys know some of the people, Charles Ferguson was sitting next to us. He's the public works guy. And all these things, all these calls started coming in. We're trying to deal with them. And um, all of a sudden, and we got, we lost all the water pressure in the city. We lost all electricity in the city. 
All phone lines were down in the city. All we had was the phone lines in that office that were gone. You know? So uh, that was a final assessment. <laughs> well, we went for we went for three and a half hours trying to deal with all the things we put in there. The school had the gym collapse, and they had uh, they couldn't account for six kids. So I sent my truck company there. So I was in, in, I was in the University Operations Center. So I'm technically pretending to call the DOC where the, me, the battalion chief, does and say, "Hey, fire fire operations. I'm not operations. I'm making one of the command things." And so over here is the city manager. Uh, John Nackbar, he's technically in charge of that whole thing. He delegated that authority to the fire chief, because the fire chief kind of has a more of a sense. So Chief White was there, and he's making, decision, he's making some of these decisions. So one of the decisions was made was LA City had a uh, neighborhood off of Palms that was fully involved and spreading. And Mayor Garcetti, this is all hypothetical, remember? Said, we're taking a bulldozer and we're going to level all the houses on the east side of that neighborhood. They evacuated all the houses and they flattened them to create a fire break. Huh. Culver City, are you going to do the same on Venice? Uh. <laughs> <laughs> Culver City, are you there? <laughs> Negative Ghost Rider, we had this <laughs> We said, Venice is pretty wide. We're going to try to hold it from here. <laughs> We decided not to do it. So when they went to the, that briefing for the six o'clock operational period, you see that you have an operational, you have a briefing at, in the morning and then in the evening to get ready the next day. They, they talked to the city manager or the fire chief and said, hey, what do you want to do? Someone has to make a decision. You're going to evacuate those houses on a row of houses in Venice, create a fire break? He said, no. So, but if we had decided to, I go to the law branch, law branch, and you just send as many patrol cars as you can and evacuate all those houses. We're going to send a bus, and we'll take the evacuees to, um, and we created a staging area for people who were not hurt, and a staging area for incoming resources, and that was Culver <coughs> High School. We also created us uh, an area for helicopters coming in, if we could drop, if we could make airdrops, and that was at LA, uh, West LA College. So you see we're using our resources, and we're making big decisions on some of that stuff. Who decides to all the houses? That's a big decision. Yeah. <laughs> Who would make it a final decision? It's hard to the city manager, probably the, the mayor and city council, they'd probably try to get on the line. It depends how much time they had to make that decision. So what do you do? You, you flatten the house? Yeah. These are hot, big hypothetical situations. <laughs> I know. Are they able to utilize the with like all the urgent care places that are opening up all over? Yeah. Instead of the hospital in town, are you utilizing Yeah, we would because there's a lot of great doctors in some of those. We like, we need Cedar Sinai. That urgent care right there? Yeah. Mm -hmm. They have like two or three doctors in there sometimes. Mm -hmm. Depends on what the plan is. Okay, next um, page, this would be for, for Steve, someone who's a C-Cares, is a comms log. He might, it might be someone at C-Cares who might be just, hey, what radio traffic is he getting? Because let's say someone called in and said, look, I have five kids trapped in the gymnasium. And he sends that. He's, he tells me in the DOC, hey, this is hey, what happened to those kids? I'm like, you didn't tell me. I took that. I took that report. I told you. I said I told you. So it's just a reference for him that he might use something like this. You guys ever use anything? <coughs> you ever seen that form? Not, not this very far. We have we have status for it. Okay. Uh, okay. Next one. Equipment inventory. The next form. Again, if you had that, you give it to those two people who came up and weren't seeking, weren't serving. Hey, can you take this thing and and can you go in your neighborhood to see if you can get any resources? Just let us know what you have. It'd be resources for what we would tell them. We want resources to carry people out. We want resources to cover people who might be hurt, to keep them warm. We want water to see if anyone has cases of water around. Things like that. So they might go and do that and come back to Marty, who's the scribe, uh, and he's going to talk about that. The last one I just put in there, it's a 214, and there's a description of what it is. But it, again, it's just documenting what you did. And it's really, uh, it could be a blank piece of paper. Did you say there's a website where we can download it? Or yeah, at FEMA, FEMA slash CERT, you can find those. You can also Google LAFD CERT. And don't go to their LAFD site. It'll say down there below, like, LAFD CERT, and it'll say their official webpage. And they have these, they have they have those classes, uh, classes that, uh, all these documents. Thank you. Um, I can also get them to you guys. Have you ever had these out before, Joel? 
We have not. Yeah. So, so I found these. We'll these, put them on our website. Yeah, and I'll tell Joel the link and you can get them to our website. <laughs> <laughs> have to They're just generic. So 